Okay, good morning everyone and welcome to our commencement ceremony. So that's of course a ceremony like no other. So, uh, so let me make myself full screen so that everyone can see me. By now we all know how to use Zoom. So this was really a strange year. I don't think I have ever had a teaching year like that and I hope to never have another one like that. So it was hard on everyone, it was hard on faculty, it was hard on our staff, and most of all, it was hard on students. I know how difficult it was for you to do these classes remotely, to, to, to deal with the exams, to deal with all of the problems related to COVID pandemic. But one way or another, we managed it. And I'm happy to congratulate our graduates who are completed their study and are getting their diplomas today. At this moment, of course, I would cue the applause if I could do it now. Uh, I know that you all will hear quite a few speeches later today, at least those of you who choose to participate in the in-person ceremony later. So I'll try to be brief. I'll just say a couple of words of welcome and maybe a little couple of words about the subject which brings us all together, namely about mathematics. Uh, so as I said, I won't take long. So all of us are here because we all chose math as our field in one way or another. And there are many reasons for that. For, for each one their own, but I think that there are some things which we all can agree on. Sure, math is a useful skill, which allows you to find decent job, pay your bills, that's of course important. But for most of us, that was not the primary reason why we chose math. So why did we choose math? And what I hope you all remember about math, even after you forget some particular uh, skills you learned, such as how to integrate this function or how to compute this, how to solve that equation. Well, there is a number, but so first of all, for me, the beauty of math is that it gives the clearest, the purest way of accessing the truth. So it has been said that the purpose of science is the pursuit of truth, and math is goes as far as no other science. In math, you begin with just, you know, a couple of laws of logic, the basic ideas of numbers, one, two, three, four, and so on. And then everything else builds upon that. So as long as you agree with these basic logic laws and the idea of natural numbers, the rest follows. And you don't, and you, everything can be derived. Give these things to a smart person and in several years or several millennia, he will come up with everything we know and maybe a lot more. So in math, you do have the, if you like, the absolute truth. So if someone tells you that here is a result, you don't have to take his or her word for that. You can verify that. And if you have come up with a statement, again, you don't have to uh, convince your teacher or you does. And if you have a, you just have to produce a proof. And if you can prove it, that no one can take it away from you, not your teacher, not the professor in your class, not the chair of the math department or the chair of international math uh, union or the president of the United States, no one. If you have established some, uh, some fact, and you know how to prove it, then this is with you forever. Very few uh, occupations, I don't think any other act human activity can reach this level of precision of absolute truth. Other sciences, physics, biology, chemistry, well, they try, but they're nowhere close to that. So this idea that there is an absolute unshakable proof which you don't have to take on faith, which you can verify, everyone can verify for themselves, is really very appealing to many of us, in particular to me. 
what is remarkable is that in all, if you start with these few basic premises, not only you get results which are absolutely true, but there is something pure, quite unexpected. You also find some beauty in it. All of us at some moment or other have stumbled upon some mathematical fact, which you can find really fascinating. And yes, mathematicians are not afraid to say that math is beautiful. I'm not talking about how you compute integral of this particular function, but there are some patterns, some laws, some facts, which really are, you cannot help but call them, talk about in the language of arts and beauty when you see them. For each one, for each of us, you have your favorite fact like that. It can be some equation, it can be some formula, it's some, it can be some construction. Each of us has our favorite topic, but it is quite remarkable and unexpected that in this hard logic and hard proofs, there is room for beauty, art, and love. So we all do that, what we do, not just because we strive to find proof, but also because we really love what we have found there. And again, that of course applies to almost any human activity. And the final things, which final thing I wanted to say about mathematics, and which comes slightly unexpected, is that by now it is a common, you know, it's a common place that math is the language of science. This saying goes back, I believe it's commonly attributed to Galileo. So, which means it's what, 16th century. But I should remind you that it is actually not an obvious idea. And in fact, at the times of Galileo, it was not obvious at all. It was a very novel idea at that time. Sure, you can accept that any measurable quantity of all these trajectories of things, velocities, distances, all of that can be expressed by numbers. And if it is expressed by numbers, then you can probably write some kind of formula for that. But the fact that the uh, mathematics is the language of science is more than that. It is that there is a great fit between mathematical formulas and the actual laws of the universe. 60 years ago, physicist uh, Eugene Wigner wrote an essay titled On Unreasonable Effectiveness of Math in Natural Sciences. If you have never read it, I urge you to look at that. And he argues that there is no deep reason why laws of nature has to be, have to be uh, first of all, dictated by any kind of mathematical laws at all. And second, more surprising, why these laws should be so simple, elegant, and beautiful to us. So if you look at some, I don't know, Maxwell's laws of electrodynamics, you'll see that originally there was some collection of disjoint rules. Then Maxwell wrote his equations and part of his equation were actually dictated not so much by experimental data, but, but purely theoretical arguments. And in particular by, because he expected to say, have some symmetry between magnetism and electricity, which I won't dwell on. So part of the formulas he wrote were not derived from experiment, but from mathematical formalism. And they were verified later. And nowadays, if you, with a proper language of mathematics, all these laws can be expressed by two lines and maybe 10 symbols. You can find these 10 symbols, the laws of electromagnetism uh, on the wall of Simon Center. And it's really beautiful. But if you ask me why, why laws of nature have to be expressed by this simple mathematics, I don't know. And I don't think anyone does. But uh, so there is much philosophical debate on that which I'm not really, which I don't want to get into. But what I, what, the only thing I can say is that for me and for most of us, math, in addition to being very logical and therefore uh, iron proof as in how, how certain we are in that we know something, math is also contains beauty 
And moreover, it seems that the universe shares our love of beauty and math, and that the, the laws of universe are written in the same language. And we don't know why, but it certainly means that it's a very good language. And I think that uh, for that to, I would say, explains why math is for me the queen of sciences, as again another great man said. Okay, so I think that that's enough philosophy about mathematics right now. Our graduates, well, all of you have your own opinion about math, and you don't really need me to repeat that. I just hope that you retain this love of mathematics and love of science in general long after you graduate, regardless of what field you do, whether you decide to continue doing mathematics or switch to something else, become a scientist or a poet, that's your choice. But I do hope that you remember the beauty and logic of math, just the feeling of that in whatever you do. Okay, with that being said, uh, I think that I should stop here talking about philosophy and start with the main program. So our, I would like to pass the microphone, so to say, to our graduate director, Sam Groshevsky, who will talk about, who will present the words to our graduate student. Sam. Oh, thank you, Sasha, for this wonderful introduction. And uh, it's my great privilege to be graduate program director here at Stony Brook. Uh, we have an outstanding graduate program with outstanding PhD students, many of whom we will recognize today as they're getting their degrees. This is the people who have conducted research and have done outstanding work discovering new truths in mathematics. They have also contributed to the department in many other ways, in particular by being instructors, teaching assistants, graders, and uh, providing all sorts of other help to students in the undergraduate courses, which is ex exceptionally difficult during these times. So we're very pleased to have such a wonderful cohort of graduate students graduating this year. And would like to thank them all for all their hard work and to thank all their colleagues who are staying in our graduate program and who we will recognize when they get their degrees. With that, I would like to start by announcing the winners of the departmental awards for graduate students. So I think Scott is. Uh, so the chairman's award, yes, please. So the chairman's award for excellence in teaching by a first or second year doctoral student is awarded to Karina Cho. Congratulations, Karina. I have to provide the clapping for all of the audience, I'm sorry. The chairman's award for the, the excellence in teaching by a graduate student receiving the PhD is awarded to Jack Burkhardt. Congratulations, Jack. And Chairman's Award for Outstanding Research by a graduate student receiving the PhD this year is awarded to Shu Jia Chen. Congratulations, Shu Jia. And with that, I'd like to pass the microphone to Allah, who will recognize as a recipient of the award for excellence in teaching. Please go ahead. Hello, everyone. I have the honor of presenting the Joseph and Virginia Roller Award for excellence in teaching by a graduating student in the teacher education program. The recipient of this award needs to have a strong GPA, be recommended by former professors and instructors, have strong evaluations from cooperating teachers, and be involved in extracurricular activities in teaching. The recipient of this award is Lindsay Olsen. Congratulations, Lindsay. All right, I would like to pass the mic to um, Lisa Berger. So I think I got the mic back. You get the mic back. Yeah, sorry. Uh, so it's my great pleasure to recognize uh, all the recipients of our doctoral degrees. Uh, this is the people who get the PhD in mathematics this year. So our first recipient of the doctoral degree is Elmedia Inase, who wrote a dissertation on a twisted complex Brun-Minkowski theorem with applications and was advised by Professor Dror Barolin. And you notice that uh, our graduate students work in a variety of different disciplines and many of the words in the dissertation titles may not make sense to you or to me. I can read them. I may have some idea about some of them. 
But uh, please ask them what they do, and they will be happy to tell you about the truths and beauties they have discovered in mathematics. So congratulations, Elmet. The next recipient of a PhD degree is Jean-Francois Abou, who has written a dissertation on the stability of Ricci flows with respect to initial metrics and its application in differential geometry. And he was advised by Xu Xiong Chen. Congratulations, Jean-Francois. Uh, Jack Burkert is the next recipient of our PhD degree and his dissertation on transcendental Julia sets with fractional packing dimension was advised by Professor Chris Bishop. Jack, uh, as I told you, uh, received the Chairman's Award of the Mass Department for Excellence in Teaching and also the University-wide President's Award, President of Stony Brook University, not President of the US, for Excellence in Teaching. Congratulations, Jack. Uh, the next PhD recipient is Frederick Benirschke, whose dissertation on complex linear subvarieties, equations, and degenerations was advised by me, actually. Congratulations, Frederick. The next recognized as PhD recipient Nathan Chen, who has written a dissertation on measuring, measuring the irrationality of abelian surfaces and complete intersections, who was advised by Robert Lassenfeld. Congratulations, Nathan. Xu <laughs> Jia Chen is receiving a PhD degree for a dissertation on real WDVV relations for symplectic four manifolds, and she was advised by Professor Alexi Zinger. Shuja receives the Mass Department Chairman's Award for Outstanding Research and also the University wide President of Stony Brook University Award to Distinguished Doctoral Student. Congratulations, Shuja. Our next PhD recipient is Prisra Chowdhury, who has written a PhD dissertation on the irreducibility of the spaces of stable maps and quasi maps to a general complete intersection of multi-degree satisfying a system of polynomial inequalities. His dissertation was advised by Professor Jason Starr. Congratulations, Professor Raj. Uh, Marlon de Oliveira Gomes uh, defended his PhD and received a degree officially in December 2020 with a dissertation on anti-self dual metrics from the geometry of plane conics advised by Professor Claude Lebrun. Congratulations, Marlon. Lisandro Hernandez Vasquez is awarded a PhD degree for a dissertation on the Nirenberg problem for conical singularities, advised by Professor Michael Anderson. Congratulations, Liz. Alexander Milivojevic is awarded a PhD degree for a dissertation on the characterization of rational homotopy types in churn classes of closed almost complex manifolds, advised by Professor Dennis Sullivan. Congratulations, Alexander. Ying Hong Thumb is awarded a PhD for a dissertation on the category of boundary values in the extended crane yet at TQFT, advised by Professor Alexander Kirillov. Congratulations, Ying Hong. Riji Young is awarded a PhD degree for a dissertation on the composition theorem for semi simple local systems, advised by Professor Robert Lazarsfeld. Congratulations, Riji. And our last PhD recipient this year is Han Yuan, who is awarded the PhD for a dissertation on family floor program and non archimedian SYZ mirror construction, advised by Professor Kenji Fukai. Congratulations, Han. So our PhD recipients go off to a variety of careers in and outside of academia, and they have done remarkably well over the years, and they have done in particular well this year, despite the pandemic and most of them have gotten excellent jobs of their choice, and we wish them all all the way, very best in their future pursuits and hope they'll keep Stony Brook in their minds and come back and visit us in the future. And we're happy to have had them here. Congratulations, all PhD recipients. So next, uh, it's also my pleasure to recognize the recipients of the Master of Arts degree in mathematics. The first recipient of the Master of Arts degree in mathematics is Anne Blythe Davis. Congratulations, Blythe. The next recipient of Master of Arts degree in Mathematics is Mo Fan Feng. Congratulations, Mo Fan. And our last recipient of the Master's degree in Mathematics is Evgenia Zhukova. Congratulations, Jenny. We wish all the recipients of our Master of Arts degree in Mathematics all the best on their future pursuits and also hope they'll come and visit us and hope they'll have fond memories of their time at Stony Brook. 
And with that, I'm happy to pass the microphone to Lisa, who will present degrees in Master of Artificial Mathematics. Thank you all. Hi, I'm very happy to be presenting the to be introducing the recipients for the Master of Arts in Teaching Mathematics. These students came to Stony Brook with a bachelor's degree already in math and continued their work to more advanced mathematics and also learn about teaching in the public schools. And when they finish, they're about to go out and, and get jobs on Long Island, New York City, and maybe elsewhere teaching in grade seven through 12. The first recipient is Mr. Scott Cagnard. Catherine Capone, Sarah Culver, Victoria Fabrizio, Aaron McCormack, Joanna Simeon, Emily Salidi, Shir Jan. So congratulations to everyone. I want to introduce now the students who are receiving the Master of Arts Secondary Teaching Option. These students um, are already public school teachers certified to teach, and they had the particular challenge of running their own courses by some combination of um, in-person and online classes while simultaneously finishing their own degree online. So this was a particular challenge, and I'm happy to honor them today. The first is Gina Cavaceno, and the second is Nicole Tomei. Congratulations. Um, Professor, <clears throat> Professor Sutherland is gonna introduce the undergraduate, the undergraduate awards. <laughs> Scott, you're muted. I have to unmute now. Okay. And notice I have an actual background instead of a virtual one because otherwise I don't have a face. So sorry about that. Um, anyway, so we have several awards that are given to our outstanding undergrads. Um, plus, we have a lot of outstanding undergrads who did not get awards, but we only have a finite number of awards to award. So let's just begin with this. Um, the uh oh. I seem to have lost. Okay, so yes, now I have it. So the, the Kugasa Memorial Awards were established um, in order to honor two of our professors. And these are given to two of our former professors. These are given to a member of each class, freshman, sophomore, junior, and senior to uh, acknowledge outstanding achievement in mathematics at that level. Um, and so it was particularly tough this year because there were a lot of outstanding people, but we had to narrow down the choices. So the, the freshman award goes to Thomas Jang. Congratulations, Thomas. And an honorable mention goes to Long Zhen Chen. The sophomore award goes to Roman Popescu. Congratulations, Roman. And honorable mention to Yushan Ye. Junior award goes to He Shen Hu. The senior award goes to Ashmain Yamin with an honorable mention to Raisel Chisti, Joy Hamlin, and Julian Michelle. It was particularly hard to pick out the senior award because there were many, many seniors who were really deserving. But. And then finally, there is the Stony Brook Foundation Award for Excellence in Mathematics that goes to Spencer Catalan. Congratulations, Spencer. In addition to this, I would like to mention the Summer Mathematics Foundation Scholars. Uh, this is a program which goes mostly to juniors, but some sophomores, and they do research with a professor um, over the summer. Um, this is the first year that we're actually acknowledging this as part of our program. This year, the three recipients are Patrick Kwachek, Roman Popescu, and Ruping Zhu. Um, and last year's winner is also a graduating senior, Spencer Catalan. So congratulations to three plus one of you. Okay, so now you're stuck with me for a long time because now I'm going to mention the Bachelor of Science awardees. 
Um, I think we all know what a bachelor's degree is. So these students came as freshmen or transfers and worked hard in mathematics and earned a Bachelor of Science. Also mentioned here will be students who are double, double majoring. We have quite a few students who major in other fields as well, and uh, students who receive the minor. Um, I'm going to request that you hold your applause because we have a lot to get through, but you can applaud all you want, but I'm not going to applaud. So here we go. Uh, the first is Farhan Ahmed, Omar Asmi, Jesse Balansa, Killian Banks, Mark Kalsa, Brittany Carlazzi, Jillian Casaburi, Spencer Catalani, Julia Chan, May Chan, Mingwen Chang, Raisel Chisti, Lang Yu Chen, William Chiriboga, Sengwal Cho, Unhua Choi, Thomas Connolly, Valerie Corrado, Natalie Cotroneo, Peter Duffy, Ling Yu Fan, Song Feng, Adama Gambi, Hanya Gao, Carol Garbers, Kevin Gaune, Albert Guo, Liming Guo, Joy Hamlin, Ramsey Harrison, Kristen Hart, Omar Pagazi, Rentai Hu, Xinglin Shi, Alan Huang, Yecheng Huang, Brett Indelicado, Vincent Insinga, Yizen Jia, Eric Kio, Aiden Kim, Dimitri Kim, Yujun Kim, Kirill Klimov, Yonggun Lee, Corey Levin, Jiahu, Jiahui, sorry, Lee, Zijian Lee, Shoe Liu, Shanjia Liu, Shiwei Liu, Shu Yang Liu, Yu Hao Liu, Maggie Lo, Joseph Lombardo, Kunhui Yuan, Ertai Ruo, Michael Lynch, Kevin Mayer, Hugo Mangi, Shavian Morada, Leitan Meng, Julian Michelle, Megan Moran, Raquel Moreno, Eric Mozesko, Tianning Li, Ni, Jade Nai, Lindsay Olson, Nicholas Otero Lopez, Nicolette Pedernoster, Ian Peitch, Jianfeng Peng, Kathleen Fomsaka, Yuhua Chao, Amanda Ragusa, Mohammed Rahman, Rashida Ram Singh, Renyu Rao, 
Leonardo Rawlis, Kevin Rudman, Eric Sanford, John Santucci, Infinity Scarborough, Dylan Schaefer, Tim Timothy Zergnese, Aaron Servinskas, Mitva Shaw, Dayu Shen, Joanna Simeon, Edgar Sitt, Star Smith, Shutong Song, Owen Steele, Adam Stern, Sylvie Stoller, Zachary Stone, Jiao Yu Sun, Matthew Toledo Rochicki, Joshua Torres, Justin Vega, Oscar Wang, Yushi Wang, Ziqing Wang, Singhong Wat, Daniel Waxman, Jason Wu, Jiayi Shi, Rushin Shu, Zecheng Shu, Ajmen Yamin, Shir Yang, Jingling Yang, Hongbo Yin, Peju Yu, Xiaomin Yu, Jia Zheng, Li Jiao Zhuang, Shili Zhang, Tianli Zhang, Yongting Zhang, Chi Hongen Zhu, Pablo Mingwang Zhu Wang, Zeru Zhu, and Perry Zilberman. So congratulations to everyone. We made it through that. And with that, I will hand control back to Professor Kirilov. Sasha? Yep. Yep, we're in charge now. <laughs> okay. Uh, so thank you very much. So thank you all. I'm sorry that at the more I cannot invite you now to just join us and mingle with us and talk and take selfies because that's what we normally do of course uh, when we are so you know at the end of the ceremony unfortunately we can only do it virtually right now but let me again congratulate all our graduates all the students and all their families who supported them i know it must have been part of the families too occasionally so congratulations to all of us to all of you, sorry, <laughs> and yes, congratulations to our faculty who helped and taught and advised as well. And I do hope that uh, wherever you go, you remember the MAVE department. And if you have some question, or if you want, if you have some comment, if you just want to know what's happening in the MAVE department, well, we would always love to hear from you. Drop us a line by email or stop by if you actually are here on campus and we would love to talk to you believe me but we do love hearing from our graduates and i hope that you come back and talk to us and obviously congratulations and good luck and in whatever you do next and i'm sure you will do great things thank you let's let's now at least clap together all of us so that you can unmute yourself and do Thank you guys, and I hope to see many of you at the in-person ceremony later today, but if not, well, that's the end of one part of your life and beginning of the next one. Thank you. Congratulations, everyone.